One of the longest running Big Finish Expanded Universe Doctor Who ranges has been their Doctor Who Unbound collection. And they had eight stories over the course of several years when they were just starting out as a Doctor Who audio production powerhouse company uh, with cast members including Derek Jacobi, uh, Michael Jason, David Warner, etc, etc. Uh, recently, they've actually put all of their older stuff in a big collection set for download where you can get Unbound 1 through 8. That gets you old more up till Masters of War. Uh, we also had a story which had Terry Malloy as Davros in it as well, who makes a return to the Unbound set in Doctor Who Unbound Doctor of War Volume 2 Destiny, which is a sequel to Doctor Who Unbound Doctor of War Volume 1 Genesis. Now for those of you who are not quite caught up to the Doctor Who Unbound range, Basically, Doctor of War Genesis opens with the fourth Doctor at the end of Genesis of the Daleks with those two wires pressed together. Does he have the right? It turns out he actually does have the right. And he decides to wipe out the Daleks forever. And he put, he presses the two wires together. And immediately after that, Sarah Jane and Harry Sullivan are killed. And it turns out that the plan did not fully work and that the Daleks considered this to be an explicit first shot. So the Time Lords and the Daleks start a full-blown time war except this happens significantly earlier for the doctor so tom baker's fourth doctor is forced to regenerate like um, like paul mcgann's doctor at the end of night of the doctor into a doctor of war so colin baker becomes the war doctor and this box set i genuinely could not tell you what happened in it if you had a gun to my head because i did not really rate it when it came out it came out back in april it was a trilogy of stories about the time war but had very little actual time war in it and honestly i didn't rate it too much they didn't seem to be exploring the potential of the character the stories themselves were not particularly interesting even though the writers are indisputably terrific like john dorney lou morgan james kettle some big finish heavy hitters but it just i guess wasn't that interesting a box set but we did um, hold out hope that the sequel destiny would expand the story would expand the characters and conclude this unbound saga where colin baker plays the doctor of war we've got a trilogy of stories we've got who am i by nigel fares time killers by lizzie hopley and the key to key to time no the key to key to time that is that's actually what it's called the key to key to time by tim foley this stars Colin Baker once again as the War Doctor. We've got Jeffrey Beavers as the Master. We've got Louise Jameson as Leela and Terry Malloy as Davros. You can see them on the cover here. And I will say that Destiny is definitely an improvement over genesis like quite a significant improvement i actually think that in three to four months time i will actually remember what happened in these stories however i think overall as a box set it suffers from many of the same issues where it, honestly a lot of the stories just sort of meander around have very complicated and contrived climaxes and then you just sort of leave them thinking oh well that was an hour of audio that was maybe not as smart as it thinks it is i will say though who Am I by Nigel Fares is an incredibly strong start to the box set and is easily out of the six stories in this Unbound uh, War Doctor saga is easily the best of the lot and it is essentially a retelling of The Face of Evil which is the season 14 story where the Doctor lands uh, between the wars of the Tesh and the Sever team and meets Leela for the first time. And the fourth Doctor's face is carved in the mountain as their god. He is the voice of their computer, Zoanin. However, because the fourth Doctor regenerated after the events of Genesis of the Daleks, there is no Doctor there to meet Leela. Instead, Jeffrey Beavers as the Master takes that role, and the subversion has to be heard to be believed. <gasps> Great, Zoanna. I'm sorry, my dear. Did I startle you? Uh, don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. The evil one. Well, even I would say that's overstating it a little. No, my dear. I am the master. You are not my master. Uh, we shall see. How did that box appear out of nowhere? Is it magic? Oh, there's no such thing, I assure you. If there were, I could have just clicked my fingers or waved a wand to get to where I've got to, as that irritating fellow with the coat has the habit of doing, though quite why he insists on calling it a screwdriver. And what is your name? Leela. 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 Excellent. 
Would you like an acid drop? It is true, then. They say the evil one drinks acid. You mustn't believe all they say. No, these are sweets. They're rather good. Go on, have one. I I'd take a yellow one if I were you. The red ones can be a little difficult to digest. Jeffrey Beavers as the master. He's been playing the master for Big Finish for some time now, but this is like the first extended time I've, I've heard listening to him since I've gotten into Big Finish. And oh my god, Jeffrey Beavers is genuinely exceptional. Such a terrific master, terrific voice actor. I love what he's done with the master in these two box sets. He is an absolute riot. I loved listening to him, and I think he is the MVP of the Destiny box set. So... When it comes to this encounter, though, where it's the Master who arrives uh, in this conflict between the Tesh and the Sever team, and the Zoanan um, consciousness, the computer, the supercomputer, spoilers for the face of evil, I guess, we do hear Colin Baker's voice as the, the warrior, the war doctor, the warrior, as he's called in these box sets. He is one of the voices for Zoanan, but it has got a split personality. And the events that lead up to Zoanan developing that split consciousness are quite interesting, and the end as well with what the master does with Leela is so grim so dark that I forgot that I was listening to an unbound Doctor of War box set and thought I was listening to a Derek Jacobi war master set kind of like the killing time set from last year when the war master inflicts brutal punishments onto Joe Grant and Nyssa of Traken. it's genuinely dark stuff and I will say the main issue with who am I is that it's a lot of it is maybe reliant on you remembering some of the key supporting characters from The Face of Evil. And The Face of Evil is only kind of a half good story, but the stuff you have to remember for this story is what takes place in the not so good half of that serial. All of the, the conflict and the supporting characters who are in the Tash and the Sever team. I can't remember any of their names. So when a character turned up and was like, I am this person, I was like, oh, am I supposed to remember you? I don't even know who you are. But that's more of a me issue because this is meant to be a, a retelling, a what if of the face of evil. But Who Am I by Nigel Fares is really, it's a it's an interesting release. I liked it a lot. Jeffrey Beavers is terrific as the master. Louise Jameson as the younger, impressionable Leela that the fourth Doctor met all those years ago feels authentic and genuine. And like I said, the last 10 to 15 minutes are so dark and so grim. And by the end of it, I was thinking, oh my God, what are they going to do next? Is this going to be like the brand new sub arc? Is, is the master's plan to take over the universe and wipe out the Time Lords in this time war going to come to fruition? and then all of a sudden we go to the next story time killers which takes place on marinus and we've got the warrior and the master as like a time lord pairing set to um they're meant to be um checking out a disturbance on this planet and the events of who am i are never brought up in the box set again it ends on a cliffhanger and the cliffhanger is never resolved or brought up again in this box set we don't, I, currently there are no more confirmed unbound sets. This was definitely sold as two box sets, two parts of a two part story, but it's just th this loose thread is just hanging and is never brought up and resolved again. And I think that's really disappointing because it is the most interesting thing about the box set. The War Master played by Jeffrey Beavers, his plan coming into effect, the things he has planned for Leela, and then it just, it's just dropped. And it's never brought up. And Jeffrey Beavers isn't in the key to key to time. He's only in Time Killers, but this has nothing to do with Who Am I? This really dark and interesting, almost like profound twist ending to Who Am I takes place. And then it's never built up on again. It's like, I don't, I don't get it. I, why? It's the, it's the best part of the box set. But anyway, Time Killers takes place on Marinus. It doesn't have to, though. The fact that it takes place on Marinus has no bearing at all on the plot it's, it's it's a bit of a random name drop but the people who live on marinus are in a society where time is literally money at one point the warrior and the master encounter a machine that finds them that taxes them 15 percent of their lifespan because they did not cooperate because that's just how currency works on marinus now let's play a clip Time's out. You will present your wrists for registration. Oh, she's not a hologram. She must be manipulating dimensions. That's what the blurs are. 
Bank officials in helmets or in some kind of air pocket. TDF, temporal detection field. You are temporarily outside of bank jurisdiction until payment or punishment is processed. Oh, I'm getting bored with this. We're attracting more of them. We need to leave this place now. Local civil nonsense doesn't concern us. If this tedious TDF is anything more than show... You are resisting bank authority. Present your wrists. What? I don't talk to foot soldiers. Where's the manager? We're wasting time. We need to get back inside the target. Take their wrists. Attach the account vans. But hey! Uh, oh. ah, ah. What is this? Get it off at once. Interest for first offence, SLO, authorised. Interest deducted from both accounts. Uh, interest? What did you just do to us? The Bank of Millennials charges 15% on a first transgression. 15% uh, of what? Of your predicted lifespan. Keep moving and have a fast day. We're gone. And as somebody in the comment section said, like that Justin Timberlake movie, yeah, it's the Andrew Nichols movie In Time. Yeah, Andrew Nichols directed Gattaca as well. In Time, though, mainly used it as an excuse for how can we have um, Olivia Wilde be Justin Timberlake's mother? Uh, that was the main inciting reason for that, um, for that creative decision, where time is money and you have a... Uh, basically, if you're rich enough, you are immortal. And that's a similar thing that's happening on uh, for Time Killers by Lizzie Hopley. Now, Lizzie Hopley is an incredibly good writer. Her work on Big Finish is absolutely exceptional. However, I don't think that Time Killers is quite the stinging rebuke of capitalism that it thinks it is, because it is basically just describing modern-day capitalism, except the currency is time instead of money, like very much like the film In Time. So, yeah, it, when it's trying to make these uh, observations, like, this is horrific, this is terrible, what is happening to this society? It's like, no, this is just what it's like on Earth in current-day capitalism, except it's on Marinus for some reason, and the currency is a bit more literalized. So when people have years of their life taken away, that's just, like, like modern-day prison or fines, or when you have poverty, meaning that you have a lower life expectancy. It's... You know, I don't think that Time Killers is the stinging rebuke and adaptation of capitalism in space that it kind of thinks it is. I will say Jeffrey Beavers as the Master is once again terrific in this set. But I think the ending is way too convoluted for its own good. There's a hell of a lot of timey-wimey stuff that doesn't quite make sense or add up. I listened to it three times and I still don't think I quite got my head wrapped around the ending or how the main threat is defeated. It's meant to be uh, like based on paradoxes and timey-wimey stuff, but honestly, it didn't really add up and I didn't really care that much. There's a, a bunch of supporting characters who are meant to empathise with and sympathise with, but I never really found them particularly endearing. Honestly, Time Killers was not that interesting. I like. I think it, it was good to have the the warrior and the master get, uh, you know, almost like a doctor companion relationship. That was interesting. But halfway through the story, the master just runs for it and legs it. So the he has his own little subplot, but the warrior and the master are separated, so they don't really have that fun interplay. It feels like it's kind of losing its strongest asset here. And this is the end of Jeffrey Beaver's involvement in the the Doctor of War Destiny box set. He was easily the best thing about it, but he's not in the last story, which is the key to key to time, because because this is an alternate universe that takes place after the events of Genesis of the Daleks and the Time War started way, way earlier. It means that the key to time that the Doctor was sent to find with an incarnation of Romana is still out there to be found. And the White Guardian finds the warrior and decides to send him on a mission but he is not teaming up with Romana he's teaming up with somebody else and if you've seen the cover of this set then you know who he's teaming up with in order to find the key to time let's play a clip hey you're not who I expected who are you I was about to ask you the same question I was told my greatest enemy was waiting for me. I was told the same. Unlike a guardian to make a mistake. Well, you've clearly been augmented with Dalek technology, so I suppose we are naturally opposed. But half a Dalek does not make for a fearful foe. Half a Dalek. I am wholly responsible for them. 
I am Davros, their creator. Nope. Sorry, it means nothing to me. And you? Who then are you? They call me the warrior. I see. And do they still call you that? What do you mean? Well, to look at you, one wonders when a warrior retires. <laughs> uh, uh, there's fight in me yet. A pity, then, we must not fight. I was told to give you this. According to my instructions, it is the core of the key to time. Oh, that will certainly be of use. Oh, but this is intolerable. I fight for the Time Lords. You, presumably, fight for the Daleks. It was emphasized that cooperation is essential. The universe is at stake. The universe is always at stake. In a war like this, there's always somebody somewhere causing destruction at a despicable rate. As you may have figured out from that clip, it makes sense that Davros does not recognize who the Doctor, who the Warrior is, because they regenerated. I don't think it doesn't make I don't think it makes sense for the Warrior to not recognize Davros, because even though the canonical reason in this story is that it has been so long since the events of Genesis of the Daleks for the Warrior that he genuinely does not remember who Davros is, that seems a little bit like a weird reading of the War Doctor as a character. It would be kind of like if the War Doctor forgot who Cass was from the the woman from the Night of the Doctor who the Eighth Doctor tried to save. I don't think that rings true but that's in the grand scheme of things a bit of a nitpick i think that as usual as you'd expect from terry malloy as davros he is terrific and he does a great job at filling the jeffrey beaver shaped hole for this concluding story in the box set i think that there's some great interplay between the warrior and davros but when the dynamics start shifting and changing towards the third act there's some changes to behavior and to interactions that I don't think were remotely earned. And I think when you try to have the warrior as a character who has been through so much, who has been through thousands of years of the time war being ripped apart and put back together again and everything, to change the way he does in the climax of the story doesn't entirely work. Especially because when we're dealing with this whole box set, this trilogy of stories, Who Am I, Time Killers, and The Key to Key to Time, we only have two stories with the warrior as well. Maybe he should have had a bigger role in Who Am I to maybe lay some of the groundwork for this it feels like three disconnected standalone stories especially since not to beat a dead horse but the cliffhanger ending to who am i is never brought up or resolved in any capacity in this box set which is the most disappointing thing about it the production across the box set is terrific there's some cool um performances from all of the leads as you would expect I think there is a casting decision when it comes to a key to time reference and a twist that it tries to pull in the third act that it does not pull off because the casting doesn't work. That's not an issue with the actor. That is absolutely an issue with the casting. The actor they got to play that character for that twist to connect it back to the original key to time story from season 16 does not pay off the way I think they intended it to. And then when it comes to the, the climax of the story, it just ends with a bunch of pomp and circumstance and a lot of loud noises and a lot of sound effects. And I genuinely don't know how the box set ended. I think there's some ambiguity that is deliberate, especially because towards the end of this box set, the fourth wall gets thoroughly and utterly obliterated. You'll know it when you hear it but I don't think it's adding up to anything particularly interesting or meta. Maybe if I actually sat down and talked with Tim Foley, or Tim Foley, the writer of the story, set across his mission statement for it, or talked about his intentions behind it, I might get more out of it. But as of right now, I just think it was a bit of a pretentious ending. Flipseed in the chat, I actually rolled my eyes when the fourth wall broke. I thought it was really interesting, but then it's never really expounded upon they don't talk about it again they don't mention it again it is it is the equivalent of an episode of don't hook me i'm scared when the red guy looks at the camera and goes who is that and then it just carries on as normal it was like that except don't hook me i'm scared plays it as satire plays it as parody 
but the key to key to time seems to be playing it completely straight and it's quite disappointing like both of these box sets i think are the biggest most disappointing big finish releases of the year not because they're necessarily bad but because i think having colin baker play the war doctor in an alternate version of the doctor who universe from season 12 onwards is a fascinating idea full of so much potential that it never quite lives up to i think having jeffrey beavers as the war master is the biggest stroke of genius is the biggest stroke of genius that the box sets pull but when we get to the ending of who am i and it never happens or pays off again that's when it kind of became apparent that these two box sets were conceptually misguided i think that obviously i don't hold any ill will to anyone involved but it was a case of like if you were gonna have this set up have this premise have these incredible actors why didn't you do anything with them and here's a clip from the key to key to time where colin baker just goes completely off the chain and i loved it and i wish we had more of it the context for this clip is that one of the segments of the key to time that the warrior has been sent to collect turns out to be a sentient person and that does not stop the warrior Am I to be trapped as crystal forever? Shining. Screaming. Stop it! No, 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 this is a defense mechanism, isn't it? An emotional response to prevent me from retrieving the piece. You pretend to what? Display sentience? Feeling? I am sentient. I am feeling. It's not going to work. I'm not really sure if the key will change anything. End everything but it is a mission and in a war like this do you realize how rare that is to have an aim a goal a purpose mm? i have spent years entangled in temporal trenches i have aged de-aged and aged again i, I am so tired of it all but the fact that you get to fulfill your role escape this existence I envy you I really do when you've got in my opinion one of the best actors to ever play the doctor and a doctor who has definitely found his definitive incarnation in the audio medium and then you put him in these box sets but you give him material like that which does not correspond even remotely to the ending of that story it seems so disheartening i think colin baker is terrific across the set but the writing does not do him much justice jeffrey beavers is amazing and the writing does do him justice until they decide to write him out i'm i feel so genuinely burnt by that cliffhanger it would be like here's a comparison it would be like if series three you go all the way up to series three you go human nature family of blood blink utopia the cliffhanger to utopia is Derek jacoby turns out to be the master and then all of a sudden episodes 12 and 13 are the lazarus experiment and 42 and you you just watching those stories and thinking isn't isn't like the master like around now weren't they like trapped on that planet you know with the future kind about to eat them and you had all these other characters around and like captain jack and martha and they were gonna die and oh no we're just we're just doing the lazarus experiment now oh okay that's the closest comparison i can think of to, to how much of a whiplash it is and it doesn't seem to be done with any sort of clever intent it was so disappointing yeah honestly I, I i it's very rare that i'm kind of negative when it comes to big finish because they do have such a high standard and they do such good work but this unbound doctor of war these two box sets i think they're the most disappointing big finish sets i've listened to this year something that's so conceptually interesting and full to the brim of doctor who alumni incredible talent but with scripts that are meandering that don't know what to do with the characters and are just filled with convoluted endings and some meta-analysis that i can't even remotely discern the intention of i yeah i i i think these two box sets this year as depressing as it is are a safe skip 
And unfortunately, Colin Baker, 2022 has been the year of Colin Baker. He's had some terrific outings this year. This was his year. I'm afraid it did not end well. But we will always have the memes. Even more of me.